our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. How are you getting back down into that corner? In May 2013, a serious leak of ammonium coolant caused an emergency on the International Space Station. There was only one way to fix the problem, a spacewalk out into the vacuum. In 1965, Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov became the first human to walk in open space. If you direct your ship into the open sea, you better be able to swim. Now, if your ship goes into space, if you're building space stations, and we were planning to do just that, then you must be able to swim in the open space. And not only to swim, but to do assembly and disassembly work there. Nowadays, so-called extravehicular activity, or EVA for short, is an ordinary part of life and work for astronauts. Most ISS expeditions include spacewalks, typically lasting five to six hours. Logistics module over to the International Space Station. I love my spacewalks. <laughs> I didn't want to go back inside. Uh, it was really fun. ESA astronaut Krista Fulgosang performed five spacewalks, spending a total of 32 hours in open space. Okay. Okay, I'll open it here. Put it right here. There are several reasons why we need EVA, and the most obvious is if something breaks on the outside, uh, you have to go outside and fix it. And that's when you may have to do some urgent, unscheduled EVAs. But uh, when we were building the space station, we needed a lot of EVAs, hundreds of hours of EVA. Every spacewalk starts on Earth. At the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory in Russia's Star City, ESA astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti and Alexander Gerst are preparing for a dive. A short briefing and medical checkup are followed by a quick examination of their spacesuits. It's nice, it keeps me safe and alive underwater, so it's good, maybe one day in space. So I connect the connector for my biomedical data, so uh, people on the ground uh, can read my heart rate and my breathing rate and my body temperature through a sensor in my ear. Today we were really practicing opening the hatch, getting out of the airlock, transporting a big uh, payload. We will work with electrical connections, we will work practice the procedures to rescue an incapacitated colleague, an incapacitated crew member. The underwater suits, almost identical to those used for EVAs, enable their users to breathe, move and maintain normal body temperature in extreme conditions. It's the combination of 50 years of technological improvements. The first lessons were learned from Alexei Leonov's pioneering spacewalk that almost ended in tragedy. The airlock on Leonov's ship, Voskhod 2, was a cloth tube, barely wide enough to crawl through. It had to be compact to be compatible with the existing rocket. The peculiarity of this airlock is that it's inflatable. It was delivered into orbit folders. And then the beams were inflated to turn it into a cylinder through which Leonov went out into space. As I stepped on the edge of the airlock, for a couple of seconds, I looked around to see what I could see. The Earth is round. I uttered that without even noticing. It just came out. After a few minutes in open space, Leonov found that his spacesuit had ballooned from its internal pressure, stiffening to the point where the cosmonaut could not bend his joints. Unable to re-enter the airlock, he made a risky decision to open a valve in his suit and bleed some pressure off. I had no right to do that. I had to report to the ground, but 
I realized it would cause such a panic. I felt prepared to make the decision myself and I released the pressure. All Russian spacesuits, including Leonov's, were designed and made at a company called Zvezda. The fundamental difference compared to our modern suits is that Leonov's suit was all soft. It was made as a soft seal shell, and the entire life support system was carried in a separate small backpack, which Leonov had to put on and connect with tubes. A modern Orland spacesuit has a solid metallic torso. Its newest model, the Orland MKS, can automatically regulate the temperature inside. Euronews was granted exclusive access to the firm's labs. A spacesuit is a shell enveloping a person, providing life support. It's a sealed, powered shell that enables the person to move in space. Any activity generates energy, heat, that should somehow be removed. So there's a special temperature control system in the suit. The carbon dioxide exhaled by the astronaut should be absorbed. In sum, a spacesuit is a miniature spaceship that has arms and legs that you can move. Engineers simulate open space environment inside a large thermovacuum chamber so that astronauts can get used to pressure differences. Feeling confident is crucial on spacewalks where things don't always go as planned. The third of my spacewalks, we were actually trying to repair a solar array. It didn't want to retract properly. And we didn't know how to solve it when we started this space. We went out with the improvised tools and let's see how we do it. And it was a wonderful feeling how we were working together. We were two guys outside. There were another eight inside the space station and a shuttle. We were all of them more or less helping in some way. And then we had hundreds of people in the ground control, mission control center, who also were, you know, working and so giving uh, ideas and help and all that. So it was almost like, felt it kind of tether all the way down to the earth. Yeah, safer for me if you can hang on to this hand. All right, Christer, good job. Hey, hey, thanks a lot. Thank you. That yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Quite often, things get lost. Oh, great. Um, we have a lot of tools. And if it starts to float away, it doesn't matter how slowly. If it's out of reach when you see it, it's too late. Oh, Sonny, your uh, camera is uh, behind you. I hope it's tethered because it looks like it's passing underneath the arm. It's not. Every hour or so during space, we check our gloves. Okay, perfect. That's actually a little bigger hole. Yeah, I see it. Because we had noticed that happened that He's the gloves got quite uh, damaged, but never so far bad that it actually got to be. And if you get the leak, yeah, then you have to abandon. You have enough air in the spacesuit so that you can get back, unless you have a really big hole. But that's unlikely from the damage. That would be if a micrometeorite or, or a space debris would hit you. Back at the Star City Hydro Lab, the underwater training continues for Alexander and Samantha. Whether their upcoming flights will include any planned spacewalks or not, all astronauts should be able to leave the station and perform maintenance operations wearing a spacesuit. We have like a, 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 a 0 0.4 atmospheres of overpressure in that suit and that means that everything that I grab is really hard. It's like squeezing a tennis ball. So every single time I grab hold of something or I, I, I move my carabiner, it's, uh, it's, it's hard work on my hands, so that's limiting. And of course, my reach is limited. I can move my hand up here and down there, but not much further. So I have to plan all the motions, like uh, all the movements that we do, we have to plan according to our uh, limitations in reach. The trainees stay underwater for several hours, talking back and forth in Russian with an instructor. They carry out one task after another until their program for the day is complete. The simulation is 95% accurate, almost identical. The difference is that they're surrounded by water instead of a vacuum, so they have to counter certain water resistance that makes the work harder than in zero gravity. In training, like in a real spacewalk, astronauts have to always keep an eye on their own and their crewmates' safety. 
uh, you're very free inside the bubble to move your head around. You're not constricted at all. So this is a big plus of this suit. And it even has a window on top. So you can even take a look at what's going on above your head. Learning to walk and work in open space can be exhausting. But for every astronaut, it's a step closer to the most unbelievable dream coming true. Experiencing an open view of our home planet from space, confronting the silent infinity of the universe. It was very quiet. So quiet, I could hear the beating of my heart. I could hear myself breathing. You can get to work on the, your side of the ground faster. Expect 12 turns each. And Houston like that plan. I don't know if I feel closer to the universe, but it's a special feeling. Uh, well, a couple of times during my space, I was at the very top of the space station, uh, did some work, and then I had a little bit free time. And I, I could see the whole space station below me, and 350 kilometers below there is the Earth. Like riding on, I, I was feeling like I was riding a huge horse around the Earth, and felt powerful. <laughs>